see where everyone is joining us from and something you're grateful for today while I continue to share um, the housekeeping bits. Hey, Annie, welcome. You missed the dance party, but there's always the replay. So if you like what you're hearing here, if you think it's helpful, comment, like, share the video, subscribe to the live feed, etc., etc. And guys, one week from tomorrow, my book comes out. One week. Holy crap. It feels like it's been like building up forever, and it's also like here really fast. It's crazy. If you haven't had a chance to pre-order it, I would really appreciate you do so. Publishers love to see the pre-orders coming in. And also, I've got some pretty awesome pre-order bonuses to offer you. I mean, for buying a book, you'll get a free four-week live video class with me. You'll get a webinar on how to successfully sell your stuff online, because I'm telling you, a lot of people suck at that. There are some things you need to do to have successful sales. You get a, cl a clutter clearing meditation download you can keep. And you get to take me with you wherever you go. Great bonuses. So I believe Melissa has the link in the, yep, she sure does. I'm pinning the comment to the top there. Um, you can see the link there, kerryrichardson.com slash book. will take you to the page that tells you all about the bonuses and also has some stores on there that you can click on to order it. Would really appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. Yep, 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 yep. Oh yeah. So let's see what people are grateful for, where you're joining us from. All right. So we've got Kathy from Halifax. Hey, Kathy. Welcome. Grateful for doing a palm round of decluttering and deleting digital photos. Yes. Awesome. Shelly from Massachusetts. Grateful for a relaxing day today. Love it. Love it. Sarah from St. Albert, Alberta. Another Canadian in the house. Very grateful for clearing two big grocery bags of clutter. You guys are kicking ass, man. Good stuff. Ooh, what am I grateful for from today? I am joining you from Connecticut. And my gratitude for the day. Hmm. Hmm. I'm struggling. <laughs> Maybe Melissa can type hers in the comment section. <laughs> Donna, grateful from Medfield, Mass, for 15,000 steps and a great run. Holy moly, girl, that's awesome. Let me see how many steps I've done today. Oh, wait a minute. I've been wearing a battery-dead Fitbit for like a week. So that's when I call it my, well, Melissa calls it her unfit bit. I call it my fat bit. <laughs> so maybe I should charge the battery and I can see how I'm doing for steps. But that's awesome. Mary from New Hampshire, grateful for a busy work day. So sweet. Um, oh, I am grateful for a return email from Peter Walsh. Peter Walsh, anyone with me? You know Peter Walsh, the like organizing expert. He used to have his own show. He was on Oprah all the time. Um, love Peter. Anyway, I had emailed him, and um, he emailed back like it was really him. And so we're gonna uh, we're gonna connect, which is cool. So I am grateful for Peter Walsh taking the time to respond and getting in convo with me. Alrighty. All right, let's dive into the power of the pause. I freaking love this topic because it is so powerful. It's a small little act that is so easy to do. The hardest part is remembering to do it, but the payout is ginormous. So, um, so last week, as I'm sure all of you have been through this, I saw a Facebook post that really pissed me off that I was like, oh my God, it's so frustrating. And I started to type a nasty comment. Well, not nasty. It was a a direct <laughs> comment. And I stopped myself and I thought, I did the pause and I went, is there any benefit to actually typing this comment? Will it enhance the conversation? Will it invite um, civil communication? And I thought, no, I'm just trying to like be nasty because my buttons got pushed. So stepped away, took a pause, didn't respond crisis averted, peace in my heart. So that little pause, you know, I was started to type it. And when I stopped myself, that little pause saved me from obsessively checking the post to see if my comment was responded to, uh, dreading a response to my comment, and then having to re-engage again and having this like technological pissing contest for lack of a better expression. Uh, it saved me from having to like armor up in preparation for the battle that was to come or that I was expecting to come. 
And just by pausing and not sending, not typing that comment, I saved myself so much grief. Um, I didn't have to even care or worry about what the response was going to be or, you know, so that all that mental clutter was prevented by me not commenting. And it's not like my comment was going to do me any good. So anyone have a situation like that, whether it's on Facebook, Twitter, email, in person, where you just, your buttons get pushed and you want to like lash or you want to inject your opinion where it wasn't really asked for, or I got to believe I'm not the only one. Um, Oh, happy natal day, Kathy. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Happy baby day. It's a civic holiday. Natal day. Anyway, I digress. (laughs) So I'm sure Melissa just sits over there laughing at me. (laughs) It's always my best audience. Um, So I'm sure some of you have been through that where you've just had had an itchy trigger finger and you're going to like say something you regret. That pause can save you so much mental clutter. And so I saved myself a whole lot. I have learned, particularly at the keyboard, to step away from the keyboard when my buttons get pushed. Sometimes I do type out, like I vent out what I want to say, like a really angry, nasty response, but I don't address it to the person. Like if it's an email, um, I, you know, I put myself in the to field or I blurt it out just to process it through. Then I usually make Melissa read it, who very quickly tones it down for me <laughs> because she is far less reactionary than I am. Um, she doesn't, even if she gets her buttons pushed, she's not one to like react the way I do. So I can always count on her to go, you might want to take that sentence out. <laughs> and maybe that one too. And that one too. Oh, you can hear her giggling. I love it. I love it. When Halifax Dartmouth was founded, I think. Okay. Got it. Happy Natal Day. <laughs> no, she said she used to think it was navel. Oh. Pay attention. Like it's natal. Like belly button or baby day. <laughs> it's either belly button or baby day. <laughs> no, natal day, like something was born anyway. Oh my goodness. See, natal, she said. <laughs> Let's focus people, shall we? <laughs> Anywho. So yeah. So that's that's one way that a simple pause can save you a lot of grief, can save you energetic and mental clutter. Like just take a breath before you respond, even if the person's in front of you and says something that you just makes you want to wring their neck. Just pause and go, okay, do I need to just step away? Um, what is it that I need to do to take care of myself? So one great way to save yourself a whole lot of grief, mental and certainly energetic clutter. I mean, imagine if I was like, anticipating a response to my comment on that post. I would either be dreading going on Facebook for fear of something being there that re-engages me, or I would be looking for a fight and jumping on there. I I would just be obsessing over it. At least I would be. So it's just not worth it. Um, That's a powerful way to let a pause help you. Another thing, the other way, the other kind of side of the coin is to pause before any kind of request or invitation. So whether someone asks you to watch their dog when they travel, um, when they, if they need, you know, get their kids off the bus, if will you volunteer for this committee, you know, we need you on the PTO or whatever. Uh, Hey, do you want to go to dinner Saturday night? Anything. If you just practice a simple pause, And that allows you to check in and go, okay, is this something I really want to do? Or even if it's not something you don't, you don't necessarily want to do, am I willing to do it? Like, am I willing to help this person out if that's the case? Um, Let me just pause. Uh, Michelle, I have done it when I get a text that I feel I'm being attacked. I have learned to sit with it for a day, then respond so much better to do that than fire off something you will regret. Yes. Thank you. I'm not alone. (laughs) Yes. It's so true. It's like, it's so easy to just want to respond, right? But man, that's why they say sleep on it. Yeah, Mary, good for traffic. Absolutely. It's like, take a breath. You know, what I try to do when I'm, when I'm really frustrated in traffic in particular 
is I will let people go in front of me, like if they're pulling out from side roads. And there's something about the good juju that I feel by doing that. It takes away my anger. Um, so yeah, if you get any kind of like road rage, minor or major, practice some kindness while you're in the car and you'll find that, you know, you can't be mad and kind <laughs> at the same time. It's like you can't be in a bad mood when you smile. You just can't. So 24 hour rule. Yeah, Donna, 24 hour rule. Anything that pisses you off, 24 hour rule before you respond. I mean, especially like with the, um, technological communications, texting, Facebook, email, there is so much misinterpretation. You know, someone can text me something. I'm going to read it in my voice and, you know, I might emphasize a word that makes it sound charged or snarky when they didn't intend to emphasize that word at all. Um, so it's like, it's so easy to misinterpret those things. So that's why it's great to have a second set of eyes, take a look at it. Like, does that sound bitchy to you? Or am I just reading into things? Always good to have a second set of eyes. And yeah, the 24 hour rule for sure. Um, Sarah's getting better at not responding to something that bothers her, but sometimes it comes quickly. Yeah. Sometimes it's like you can fire it off and go, what did I just do? <laughs> like, I shouldn't have done that. Um, but like with anything else, right? It just takes practice. Like take a pause, take a breath and save yourself that aggravation. Same thing with saving the aggravation with responding to those requests or invitations. Um, if you don't know, like if you're someone who tends to say yes, when you mean no, that's clutter in and of itself. It's like, okay, what, what is prompting me to accumulate this clutter? Clutter being commitments, like over committing yourself. You know, everyone's go to response now when you're asked, how are you is, oh, I'm so busy, 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 busy. So that's really a choice. I mean, yes, don't get me wrong. We all have a lot of demands on our time and life can be pretty busy. Um, but we also have a choice of how much we take on. So if you are someone who tends to say yes, even when you mean no, stop and check in and ask yourself why, like, what is the payout to saying yes to everything? Um, you know, like we really have to kind of take a hard look at yourself. Like what is the payout to me saying yes to everything? Is it a way that I can ingratiate myself to people? Um, does it maybe validate a blocking belief? You know, I've had a blocking belief my that I've worked on that is, you know, it's um, if people don't need me, then they won't be in relationship with me. Like I have to provide some sort of value or service or benefit. Be, you know, just being me isn't enough. So do I over, you know, can I sometimes overcommit to keep people in relationship with me? Yeah, I used to be really... <laughs> bad about that. I've gotten better, not perfect, but looking at why do you tend to do that? Um, do you have a need to be needed? Uh, do you give to get, you know, so many times people will give what they wish they would receive. So instead of asking for what they need, they show it or they think they're showing it. They may behave in a way that they wish people would behave toward them and then get mad when people don't respond in kind but you can't hold people accountable for expectations that they haven't met when they were never informed of the expectations, right? So I'm gonna say that again. You can't hold people accountable for expectations they haven't been informed of. So we expect people to behave a certain way, respond a certain way, act a certain way, um, treat us a certain way and when they don't, we get aggravated, but we never probably told them that's what we were looking for. So um, another reason why you might say yes when you mean no is you take responsibility. You take too much responsibility for other people's feelings. So it's nice to think of the other person. Don't get me wrong, but don't, you might take that a little bit too far. Uh, if you're so concerned, like, I don't want them to be mad at me or I don't want them to dislike me. Um, or, you know, oh, they're going to be so disappointed. You know, there have been so many times that I've thought, oh my God, if, uh, I, I really can't do this. And I just fear that, you know, people are going to be so 
disappointed slash mad slash whatever it is. And then I've said that, gosh, I'm so sorry, but I'm not able to. And the response I get is, oh, that's okay. No biggie. We'll, we'll try for another time. And I'm like, holy crap, that was it. I was so scared for that conversation. And that was the response. Like I make it up in my head that it's going to be just an earth shattering devastation to that person because I'm not available to do X, Y, or Z. So do you make up consequences in your mind that don't really exist? And then that gets you to say yes when you really mean no. Um, one moment. So let's see. Kathy, fear of rejection used to be a huge one. Yeah. Yeah. So think about, like, really, I want you to think about it. And I'd love for more people to share in the comments. When you say yes, when you really mean no, what do you think is driving you to do that? I'm curious. Like, what... What is driving you to say yes when you really mean no? Um, it you know it can be one of those reasons or payouts that I listed. It might be something completely different, but think about any requests of your time, or even like scan your calendar and see what commitments you have, and look and go, yeah, you know what? I wish I didn't agree to that. Sometimes just allowing your giving yourself permission to consider canceling or changing your mind can be enough of a relief to then help you to pause the next time. Sometimes, I can't tell you how many times I challenge clients to cancel plans or commitments. Um, you've all heard me talk about this before that I often give people the disappointing challenge that I will ask clients to intentionally disappoint at least one person a day, every day for two weeks. Freaks people out. <laughs> But when they trust me enough to actually do it, within two to three days, they're writing me saying, oh my God, I feel amazing. I feel like I'm in charge of my life for the first time. No one even cares. I haven't gotten any flack. Um, you know, we make up these stories in our heads that we're going to disappoint people and that we're just going to like devastate them or, you know, they're, they're going to hate us. And we build it up to be so big in our heads. And I'll tell you, nine times out of 10, it's not true. And honestly, that 10th time, that person really can't be that good of a friend or whatever if they can't understand that sometimes you can't show up for them. You're just not able to. Um, it's almost like we wanted it to be earth shattering to the other person so that we know we're loved or accepted. Okay, that can be part of it. Right, so for Kathy, it's like, God, I, they're, they're just going to be devastated if I can't do this. And then when they're not, it's kind of, she feel, maybe feels a little bit deflated, like, oh, I guess I don't matter that much to them, right? Um, Leah Marie, fear of disappointing the person or persons. Yeah. So, so you disappoint someone. I mean, I'm not saying make it a regular habit, but if there are times that you're saying yes to things because you don't want to disappoint the person, you're ultimately disappointing yourself if in fact you wanted to say no. So why are their feelings more important than yours? Now, again, this is not like a cut and dry black and white scenario. There are absolutely times when I say yes to things that I really would rather not do, but there are conditions within the situation that make it important enough for me to say yes when I mean no. There are, there are just some things in life, some commitments in life that you just need to show up for. Um, and again, I would say a majority of the time, yeah, I'm, it's safe to say a majority of the time, when I show up to those things, because there are those other conditions involved that are important enough for me to say yes, I end up enjoying myself when I, when I follow through with it, when I commit, when I go, when I meet up or whatever. Um, so it's so important to look at what is my motivation behind being an automatic yes person? Yeah, sure. No problem. I got it. Yep. I got it. Got it. Got it. Um, yeah. You want to think about what that is. Sarah, when I say yes, when I mean no, it's often because I don't want to upset the person or I'm concerned they will see me as unable to do it. Oh, okay, that's an interesting additional point, Sarah, right? So you don't want to upset the person and you also don't want them to think that you're not capable. Uh, so that's a great example of possible projection, Sarah. So um, if you have any fears of your limitations or perceived limitations, 
you can fear that other people are going to think that of you. So I would encourage you to pay attention to what you might fear others will think that you may actually think of yourself. And that's where the healing can begin is right there is reminding that part of you who feels a little bit doubtful in your abilities that you absolutely have what it takes to do it. You're just choosing not to. Um, that's a really big difference. So to kind of move forward with this and have this be a new default, what we want is a new default for you. Instead of your default being an automatically to say yes to everything that is asked of you, requested of you, everything you're invited to, whatever, to just practice a pause. Um, and again, at the beginning, it may be that you pause and you still agree to it when you really didn't want to. That's okay. At least you practice the pause. So the idea is eventually that pause will become a very quick gut check that you can stop and go, is this something I really want to do? Like, am I available for dinner Saturday night? And again, there's a difference between am I available via my calendar and am I available emotionally or energetically? So your calendar may show that you're available, but if you're not feeling it energetically, totally fine to just be like, you know what? I'm, I'm actually not available Saturday. Maybe we can try for another night. Or, you know, I love all the gold standard phrases that helps to give you that space you need. Let me check my calendar. I'm not sure if I have something going on then. Let me check. And while that can come off as a stall tactic, and I guess in a sense it is, it's really an opportunity for you to pause because if, if I invited somebody to dinner or asked somebody to do a favor for me, it would feel really crappy to know that they were saying yes out of any kind of guilt or obligation. I would rather know that they are saying yes because they genuinely want to help me or they genuinely want to get together with me. What's tricky is people will... Um, for people to be that honest and authentic, it means having some difficult conversations. You know, I remember many years ago, my God, a long, I can't even remember how long ago, but a long time ago, I had a very good friend of mine who I would make plans with, would get to, you know, would make plans for something and I would end up canceling. And, um, I didn't want to be that person, but I was that person. Instead of having the courage when she invited me to somewhere to say, you know what, I just, I'm not really enjoying our time together or I've just got other stuff going on in my life that I'm not able to be present with you. I would say yes and then cancel. And much to her credit, she called me on it one day and said, listen, I feel like you're canceling on me all the time. What's up with that? And she had the courage to call me on it. And she came over and we had a great conversation and she was very self-aware of the behaviors that she was exhibiting that made me not terribly excited to spend time with her at that time. And I also got to share some things with her that were going on in my life that she didn't know about. Uh, and after, I mean, we're still friends to this day and I'm talking this conversation 15 years ago, long time ago, we're still friends to this day. And, um, I can be more honest with her now. And I can certainly, um, because I practice this pause more, I can pause and, or, or I can be honest with people. Like another example is I have this group of high school friends and we try to get together for dinner, you know, every couple months or so. And, um, one of one, one person in the group wanted to get us all to go away for a weekend for like a girl's weekend away. It sounded awesome. I would have loved to have gone this summer. I knew coming into this summer, this summer is not really mine to enjoy. We're too busy with the tiny house build and I'm too busy with the book coming out. So I said in the message to everyone, while I would love to go away for the weekend with you guys, I have to be honest and say this summer, it's just not possible. Now, old Carrie would have felt really scared that I was going to hurt their feelings, that, that they'd never invite me again, uh, that I would be like evicted from the group. But I said, listen, don't, you know, don't wait for me. Go ahead and schedule the weekend. Go have a blast. Send me lots of pics. And um, after this summer, I hope to be freed up and we can do fun stuff like this. So it ended up fizzling out and then we ended up doing a dinner anyway. And again, I said, you know, please, even though it's just dinner, don't count on me, et cetera, et cetera. 
Uh, and then one other person in the group was, again, brave enough to say in the conversation, listen, um, I just went to a, to a memorial service for an old friend of mine. And the common theme I heard at that memorial service was people saying, I wished I had returned his calls. Or, I wished I had said yes when he invited me over. Yes, I know life is busy for everyone. But we can take one night out for dinner and have dinner together. And so even though we don't live all very close geographically, we found this meeting point that we each travel like an hour or two or whatever. And I, and I read what she wrote and I heard it. And I thought, you know what? She's absolutely right. Um... I can make time for that night. We went out for dinner. I had a blast. So it was like, even though there was part of me that was like, I really just feel too busy. The truth is, I could make time for that. And I needed that reality check to do so. Um, so while my initial inclination was to say, nah, I'm not really sure. I was thrilled that I went. We had a really great time. And now I, that can now become a habit that I will make it a priority to have dinner with these women. You know, they're dear friends of mine who I've been friends with for 30 years, um, certainly relationships worth investing in. Um, yeah. Oh, Annie, that's a really good point. Sometimes you can be caught off guard. That is so tricky because you're right. It's like when you're not expecting the request or the invitation, it can be such a reaction to just go, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And then you figure it out later and you either really regret your decision and you get resentful and frustrated or you suck it up and do it because you said yes in the moment. That's what I would do before is I would get caught up in the moment and I would accept the dinner invitation and then I'd be so mad and I would be dreading having to cancel it but I know I was going to. It's so true. You can really get caught off guard. That's that power of the pause. You know, so when you're caught off guard, like, Again, you want to look at what is it that prevents you from pausing and saying, you know what, let me just give that some thought and I'll get back to you. Uh, I know there's this feeling for a lot of people of, I don't want to disappoint the other person like Leah Marie mentioned in the chat or and Sarah mentioned as well. I don't want to disappoint people. I don't want to upset them. I don't want them to think I don't love them. Like whatever story we tell ourselves, again, remember, think, put yourself in the position of the asker, right? Wouldn't you rather someone accept an, an invitation or say yes to a request because they're truly interested, available, and excited at the idea? So again, always with the caveat that there's some things in life you just got to show up to, but those are really in the minority. Um, so practice that pause. So when you are caught off guard, you can just go, oh, you know, even you can even say, oh my gosh, I didn't, you know, I, I wasn't um, expecting that request or like, oh, geez, I don't know. You know what? Let me think about that for a minute and I'll, I'll get back to you. Real, I think the real power is looking at what is driving your tendency to just spit out a yes, I guess. Practice the pause. Yeah, Donna, the power of the pause. Michelle read something last week that said, just because you can doesn't mean you should was eye-opening to me because I always think if I can help, I should help. That's a really good point too, Michelle. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. I think that's a really important distinction because uh, we can do lots of things. I mean, if I had a friend who was moving this weekend, I physically could help him or her move. So I probably should, but then I'm like, no, I can't. I've got so much going on right now that I need every moment I can grab to refuel myself. So yeah, it, that's an important distinction um, of making sure that just because you can do it doesn't mean you have to. Again, I think if we go back to the place of wouldn't you rather sh say yes to a request or an invitation with your whole heart and show up fully um, then do it out of guilt and obligation. And I'm telling you, like we've talked about before, right? We've talked about the power of energy. Your energy enters a room before you do. Sorry, I just glanced at my laptop and I look orange. <laughs> do I look orange to you, Melissa? Oh, she must have earbuds on. She's not even listening to me. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Melissa? Yes? Nice. She had earbuds on. She was ignoring me. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, what are you listening to, Melissa? A funny text my brother sent me. <laughs> oh, she's reading text from her brother. Isn't that nice and supportive? That was a video. Video. That's my wife. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> I was saying when I look at my laptop, I look orange, and I said, "Do I look orange, Melissa?" Oh. Silence. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> really nice. You do look orange, by the way. <laughs> you do look orange, by the way. She says, <laughs> She's "Such a bitch." <laughs> there. Let's see. She's such a bitch. <laughs> That's true, Kathy. At least I don't have small hands. <laughs> Let's see if that does any better. Oh, I'm not as well lit, but I'm not as orange either. Do you like that we totally caught her when she was ignoring me? Whatever. That's uh, the first time I've ever done that. First time she's ever done that, right. Mm -hmm. uh, Mary, and if someone is going to be upset or displeased, it doesn't always have to be you. Yes, Mary, I love that. If one person in the equation is going to be disappointed, why does it always have to be you? I love that perspective. Love that, Mary. Yes. I gotta get some better lighting. This just blows. Anyway, <laughs> I liked myself better when I was orange. Anyway, <laughs> Andy said, Don't do it again, Missy. <laughs> Isn't that nice? So supportive. Anyway, but yeah, so I mean, we've got some really cool distinctions here in the chat. Like, just because you can do it doesn't mean you have to do it. By agreeing to do something when you when your whole heart isn't in it, or even if the majority of your heart isn't in it, your energy enters the room before you do, and some people are going to feel that. They're going to feel like, you know, geez, I don't think she really wants to be here. Um, you know, I wish I didn't ask her. Uh, and also, here's the other important thing. If you are someone who habitually says yes when you mean no, people can't trust you to be honest with them. And so they'll be hesitant to ask you because they'll, they won't be able to believe your answer. Because if you just always say yes, no one can always be like, yeah, sure, no problem, and have like unlimited energy and time. So if, if I feel like I'm putting someone out because they say yes when they mean no, it makes me feel less supported than if you had said no. I appreciate the honesty if someone says, I really wish I could help you out, but I'm not going to be around or I'm not available. Then it's like, great. Thank you. Thank you for being honest. I'll ask someone else. Um, that feels really important to the other benefit of taking that pause and answering honestly. Like, you know what? I'm not sure if I'm available. Let me check on that. Take some time with it. And, you know, you can eventually be the not able to, sorry. Um, so that feels important too. So let me see. I backed up here because I missed Lisa Land. Not used to putting myself first. It takes practice, but it feels amazing. It definitely takes practice. It's not how we're conditioned. And when I say we, it's the world. And, you know, I get it. On on one hand, that's really nice. Like, But I think the words, the, the idea of selfish gets a bad rap. We have to, you, you've got to take care of yourself Otherwise, you just deplete your energy and you empty your tank and then you're really giving from a place of lack. And, um, and that makes for really not great relationships. <laughs> Such a wordsmith. <laughs> Shut up, Mitzi. Um, Barbara. Hey, Barbara. It's so hard to say no to family and friends. It really is. But I feel like those are the most important ones. I mean, think about how valuable those relationships are, right? Um, it's hard to say no to family and friends because we love them and we want to show up for them and we want to help them out. And it's like I was saying earlier, if there are enough conditions in the request that make it worth your while to help, even though you really want to say no, you know, I mean, who likes to help people move, right? I'm just going to keep using that example. I, it's not, it's never fun to help someone move. But I agree to help friends move sometimes because I love them and I know moving can be stressful and I want to alleviate some stress for, because I love them enough, I'll suck it up and help them move as an example. So yes, there's something, um, there are some requests that come that you just don't want to do, but because you love the people enough, you do it. 
But as long as that is your motivation, Barbara, to not saying no to family and friends is because you have the energetic space, you have a, a, some time, you won't be like totally um, running yourself ragged by saying yes. You can show up for them, but don't make it an automatic yes just because they're family and friends. I'm telling you, I take such pleasure in, I am much more apt to ask people who are honest with me for help because I know they'll say no if they're not available. Now, having said that, don't use that against me. <laughs> don't always say yes in hopes that I won't ask you for help. <laughs> um, but really, like, think about what that, that, um, that pure energy between each other in relationships would just be, it's worth it. Lisa, does it tire you or inspire you? I got this from Chris Carr, and I use it for everything, including accepting invitations or requests. I love that, Lisa. Does it tire you or inspire you? You know, that's a really great, I love that. That's, that really works, right? Because that takes care of that, um, those exceptions that I'm talking about that you may not love the idea of helping someone move, but you love the people enough. So you're inspired to help them, even though the task is not great. Uh, so I love that. So if you find that it really, if the idea of it just drains you like, oh my God, I can't imagine having to do that, then it's got to be a no. Otherwise, it can actually do more harm to the relationship than good. Yeah, energy exchange needs to be equal. Oh, thank you, Donna. <laughs> I love you and will help you move into your tiny house. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Here's wise ass Missy. <laughs> sure, because we hardly have any stuff. <laughs> good reverse psychology. Say yes too much and you stop asking. No. No, no, no. But yeah, so think about, does anyone have any pending request or invitation on the table or one that came recently? Donna, that's why I said I'll help. Because <laughs> Donna, you're like the strongest woman I know, physically and mentally, but yeah, you can lift heavy shit. Um, does anyone have any like pending request or invitation? Or did you have a recent one that maybe you said yes to and you wished you had said no? Or that you're proud of yourself for saying no to because it really was not something you wanted to do. Um, share in the comments if you've had any any recent experiences with that. Share away. Yeah, does it tire you or inspire you? Love that, Lisa. Love it. Hey, Lisa, side question. Are you doing the um, clutter clearing challenge in August? I know you love that game. It is day, day seven. So what seven things did you get rid of today, Lisa? Lisa Hickey, that is, or anyone else who's doing the clutter clearing challenge. But this is, this is directly tied um, to clutter clearing because this is like, it's, calendar clutter, it's mental clutter, it's energetic clutter that builds up when you say yes, when you really meant no. Um, Kathy asked to go to PEI to do readings for an important cause. I only have two more weekends with Emma in August, so I said no. Nice, Kathy. Nice. So was that difficult for you to say no, or was it kind of a no-brainer because Emma is your daughter, um, I'm assuming? So... Um, was it kind of a no-brainer for you because you knew you wanted to spend that time with Emma? You love to do it to help out, but it's important to take care of me. Absolutely. Yeah, it is difficult. Um, oh, Sarah's doing the clutter clearing game again. Love it. Lisa, love the clutter clearing game. Yes, I'm playing and getting rid of whatever. I no longer love, need, or use. a girl, Lisa. Love it. Love it. Sarah's got to find seven things tonight. You can do it, Sarah. Donna. Had a client ask if I would train him at 5.30 in the morning. I actually pondered and took time to think. So glad I just sent him a text saying, no, my name is no. Um, I hate early morning appointments. I literally just sent him the text. Thanks for this live chat. Awesome. Oh my God. That's so great. I mean, 530 in the morning, first of all, 
It's disgusting. <laughs> but, but I get it. But that's, I mean, that's really, that's, it's tough to set a boundary like that with a client, right? But good for you. Yeah, 530, no. Um, Annie, so do you really want to continue to help me declutter my closet? Or are you just being nice? No, I really, you know, Annie, you know I love to declutter. I love to get rid of stuff. And I love to help people get rid of stuff. So no, I really do. And I haven't forgotten you. Melissa and I will be up. I actually have a little list on my phone of things that um, we're going to take care of for you when we're up there. So I really want to. I really do. Uh, let's see. Barbara, two invitations for Labor Day. One with friends, one with family. Feel like I'm going to let people down no matter what I decide. Hate the guilt feelings. Yes, the good news is people love you, so they'll be disappointed that you're not attending one of them. Let them be disappointed. They'll be fine. They'll recover, and then they'll miss you. And that's totally fine. Pick the one that you're going to enjoy the most. Um, and I know that that guilty feeling, like... If you can take some time to respond to that guilty feeling of just saying, you know what, it's okay, so I feel a little bit guilty, you know, and, and again, you know, pay attention to the whole idea of feeling guilty because the whole idea of guilt means that you did something wrong or you did something bad. And I wouldn't say that you did anything bad by not being able to be in two places at once. You just can't be in two places at once. So which one... Are you leaning toward friends or family? Tell us in the chat. Yeah, Don, I get that. Didn't want to lose him as a client. Totally get it. I know sometimes we can bend over backwards, right? But then you would go there at 530 in the morning, resentful and frustrated, and that's the energy you'd be working with him in. And that would actually make it much more likely for you to lose him as a client than for you not seeing him at 530. So it's good. All right, so Barbara's leaning toward family. So there you go. So you're going to go hang with your family, Labor Day, um, and you're going to let your friends know that, you know, you, ha you have plans with your family. They'll miss you. You can see them again at another time, I, I imagine. Um, so family it is. So the fear of guilt or the avoidance of guilt is not a reason to commit to something you don't want to do. That's just another example of where we want to run away from our feelings, that we don't like to feel uncomfortable feelings totally get it. Um, but again, I'm going to come back to one of my favorite quotes, Byron Katie. I don't let go of my feelings. I welcome them in and they let go of me. I'm paraphrasing. I don't let go of my feelings. I welcome them in and they let go of me. So instead of resisting and fighting the guilt, just let it wash over you. Like, yep, I feel guilty, but I'm going to spend time with my family Labor Day. And I'm not going to spend time with my friends. And it does. It kind of just like washes over you and then it washes away. But if you try to fight against the guilt, you engage it in battle. And it wants to, um, it wants to win the fight. So it can think that it won the fight when you let it wash over you. But in fact, you just let yourself feel it. And then it goes away. So, yeah. You're welcome, Donna. All right, so Barbara's going to hang with her family. Don is not working with clients at 5.30 in the morning. Um, Shelly's going to wait and respond, pause before responding and not help just because she can. Um, just because you physically can doesn't mean you mentally or energetically can every time. So uh, practice that power of the pause so you can evaluate. You got it, Barbara. All right, everybody. If you have any final comments, please go ahead and put them in. If I don't get to them as I'm wrapping up here, I will come back and write um, a written response. So again, thanks everybody. Yeah, Sarah, wait to say yes. Thanks so much everybody for spending some of your Monday night with me or Monday afternoon, depending on where you're from. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Please go ahead and share it with friends if you found it beneficial or useful. You can share the recorded version as well. If you think other people could help, this could help other people learn to Practice the power of the pause, not say yes right away. Learn to deal with those uncomfortable feelings and feel them. Go ahead and share the video. And I will see you next Monday. I'm not sure of the time, but it's probably going to be a pre-launch party because it's going to be the day before my book comes out. Anywho, thank you, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great week.